lots of background stories centered on Ferrari and Monaco this weekend, and Craig Scarborough, of course, has more. Well, Craig, if I can just begin by trying to put this in a nutshell, because a Ferrari engineer went to Mercedes, we've mm -hmm. now learned that Ferrari have been running a twin battery setup, which has effectively given them more power, maybe, for the MG UK system. But the FIA have done tests now and said that isn't the case. That's right. And basically they're happy with it. But the big news is Ferrari got this twin battery layout. And that's always been a bit of a mystery in Formula One, the whole battery and maybe other teams are doing it as well. But now we know there's a twin battery and you've done a nice drawing for us to show us roughly how that would look. Yeah, OK, so let's just run through the basics of the, the hybrid, the ERS setup. So what you have is you've got the, the two MGUs, one on the turbocharger, one on the motor. The motor one is the K, the Kurs type one. Yeah. These are both connected to a common battery. And in between, you've got some control electronics, which effectively change the AC phase of the motors into the DC phase of the battery and change the, you know, the amount of uh, power going from the battery to right. the motors. So everyone else, as we understand, again, batteries are one of these areas. I mean, F1's shrouded in secrecy. Battery technology, I mean, it's a completely closed book. We know nothing about them. We see very few of they them. They tell us nothing about it anyway. So yeah. what you would normally have is a common connection from one battery with all of the cells going out to each of the two separate MGUs. Yeah. Now, what has come out from this story is that Ferrari run twin batteries, but within one casing. So potentially you would have one battery connected to the MGUK, one battery connected to the MGUH. And the, the assertion that was going on is that by running these batteries in parallel, if you could parallel connect these two connections, yeah. you could get more energy going to the MGUK, which would give you more than the 120 kilowatt boost of power, which obviously is illegal because that is a cap. It's a hard cap. It's measured from the DC connections on the battery. Right. Now, the FI have been measuring these battery connections for three races now. This story's been bubbling up all year. There's been no real hard story behind it, and right. we're still lacking lots of details. So this is really just a very much a, a, an estimate. But... They've measured this, they were a bit confused, they've gone back to Ferrari for clarifications, apparently Ferrari have made some software changes, which only confuses it. Was that <laughs> software changes to stop what they were doing, or was it just software so that the FIA can understand exactly what is going on yeah. and they can track this? We don't know. So, Monaco, they measured this again, and they've now declared that the system is legal, the Ferrari battery setup is, is completely legal. But that does raise the question is why Ferrari have got this set up in the first place. Well, and also, I guess we can conclude that one thing Mercedes don't have is a twin battery setup, because if they did, they wouldn't have brought the whole thing to the attention of the FIA in the first place. So well, exactly. I mean, it's, it's not something we would expect, because obviously yeah. within a, a battery pack, there's lots of ways you can well, arrange Well, speaking of battery yourself. pack, you actually took a picture of a yes. battery pack. Not many out there, and here is no, one. When, um, when do you actually take this one? So this one was taken... Uh, in the middle of last year, I still remember, I think it was Austria. It's very rare to see a battery coming out of a car. Yeah. So what you've actually got here is not just the battery, but it's the control electronics as well, all packaged within one unit. And you can just see there's some connections for the to go out to the control electronics on the, the side of the battery there. And but that could have been a twin battery setup yeah, without as what, us knowing it. So from the FI have told us that Ferrari have run a twin battery since 2014. Mm -hmm. So any allegation that they're doing something illegal with it means that either Ferrari have been running that way since 2014, yeah. but a lot of people are saying, well, Ferrari is so much quicker out of the corners this year. It must be to do with the, the hybrid system. But if they've been running the system since 2014, then that's a bit of a red herring. So, you know, lots of allegations, well, not a lot of facts. They also have a pretty good car, too, with quite a lot of rake, so they'll be good on traction out of slow corners, in theory. Obviously, it's a car that's developed in terms mm -hmm. of its, its torque and power anyway. And the bottom line is that Ferrari are still a Mercedes beater around Monaco. Yeah. And they're not a Red Bull beater, which means they've probably found quite a nice average now. And they're going to be pretty quick on medium to fast circuits as well. Actually, so, they've optimised the car from last yeah. year. And because they're so competitive, they're getting so much more analysis of the car. You know, some tiny little details on this car mm. and how they operate the car. Everyone's worried. Therefore, they're throwing allegations and protests towards Ferrari to see if it unbalances them, which is, you know, the standard politics which of F1. they would do. Yeah. Now, what's going on with oil as well? Because there's a story there now mm -hmm. as well about the two different oil systems, the regulations affecting only the one for the, for the internal combustion mm -hmm. engine and not for the turbo. Yes. So oil burning a way to increase the power of the engine, particularly during qualifying modes. The story's been going on for a few years now. Over the winter, the FIA clamped down on oil consumption. They clamped down on the oil specification. But that only relates, as you read the regulations, to the internal combustion engine. The turbocharger, which also runs oil for lubrication and cooling, can have a separate oil system. Right. So the Mercedes, again, have gone to the FIA and asked for a clarification. 
Is the oil in the turbocharger system subject to the same consumption as the total oil for the rest of the engine? Can it be burnt as um, yeah, a combustion aid? FIA came back before Monaco, says no, the oil in the turbocharger, in the engine, in fact, oil all over the power unit, the consumption is fixed by that same regulation. So you can't have 0.6 of a litre per 100 kilometres for one bit and then the same for another. It's right. a total thing. So, you know, clever, devious people, these Formula One engineers, well, aren't they? I mean, it's know, just no getting ahead of them at all. The rumours about the turbocharger being a route to oil combustion uh, is been going on for several years, and some of the manufacturers have pointed to other manufacturers, and I won't name names here because it was very much off the record conversations. So people have thought this has been going on for a while because you can leak oil through the seals mm. and the turbocharger because the oil pressure is greater than your boost pressure. So you can always get oil to go in there. And obviously we then start to see the Ferrari smoking on startup. We spoke at the start of the year, this could be appointed towards burning oil. And now we can quite clearly see that the FIA said that, yeah, if you are burning oil, you can only burn this amount, you can only use this formulation of oil. So that should nip any more allegations in the bud there. Well, it might nip Ferrari a little bit in the bud if we see in Canada, maybe if they're not quite as quick as we would expect them to be in Canada, would that be because they've been affected by this clarification? Uh, well, it's it's always something you can you can raise from you know we've been to about. lots of very different things. We've got to remember also that new power units for most of the teams will be coming in in ah, Canada because it's the it's the race well. change. Yeah. So there's lots of factors, and I think people will always point fingers. But you know, at the end of the day, there's very little we can do uh, from the outside is to understand exactly what factors are changing the performance of the cars. <laughs>